Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Well, I've got my surly low side here. Everybody loves the low side. Um, last winter, I did this custom mullet build with my Esker Hey Duke, and it was kind of fun and cool. Well, I have some parts laying around, and I thought, why not kind of mess around with this bike some? Um, keeping it a single speed, but putting a suspension fork on it and maybe try mullet or try to leave these wheels on here. I don't know. I'll have to play around with it. Um, some of the stuff I have over here is I have the mullet wheel set. So 29 front, 27.5 rear that I could set up as single speed. Then I have, uh, 35 millimeter clamp stem and these handlebars because the front end is going to get raised quite a bit when I put this fork on there. This is a 140 millimeter travel 29er fork, right? <clears throat> so doing this fork plus a mullet setup will definitely slacken this out quite a bit. But I'm starting with uh 70 degree head angle in this case right here with the stock fork on this bike so i don't know how slacked out it'll get i'll have to play around with it but one of the advantages i have i have two headset options i have this cane creek headset which is just a standard headset for a tapered setup or I got this and have yet to use it, <laughs> the Wolf 2 Geo Shift headset. So there's potential here that I could go with the 29 or 140 millimeter fork and the, you know, 29 inch wheel on the front, 27.5 rear. And then if the head angle gets too slack, I can kind of correct it by at least one degree with this headset. So, you know, I have options, which is kind of cool. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and build it out into the most extreme setup um, with this fork as a mullet, put those handlebars on it, and so on. And then I'll do some geometry measurements. Um, and so um, I think I'll go plus one degree. So we'll see what happens. So we'll end up doing all these changes and then I'll add a degree to the hand angle because I just have this assumption that it's going to get way too slack otherwise. Um, that's where I'll start and then we'll go from there. And if I feel like I need to tweak some things, I'll tweak some things. Um, kind of fun that I have all these parts laying around and then I can play around with this bike. I really love this bike. So even if I do do all these changes to it, I'm not getting rid of the original parts that I have on here because I love the bike in this configuration. But, <clears throat> you know, so I'll keep the handlebars, I'll keep the you know, the wheels and the way that it's set up right now and probably put it back into this configuration at some point. But I want to experiment with trying some different things out. Um, one of the other things I'm concerned about is the bottom bracket just getting too high. Um, <clears throat> but if the bottom bracket gets really high, it'll definitely make the bike much more like jump friendly and poppy things like that, it may not be a great trail bike, but I don't need to worry about that because I've got trail bikes, bikes I ride all the time over here. So this could end up being very specialized. I don't know, maybe a, a mullet DJ bike or something like that, right? We'll see. So let me build it out. I actually think the blue with this green will actually look kind of cool. And I do have some blue cog so I can kind of balance it out a little bit. So yeah, let me see what I can do. <laughs> okay, so I was able to just pull this fork out and put that fork in without changing anything on the headset. Um, I've never seen this before, but I'll show you why. 
if you look at that race at the bottom, notice how it's spaced out. So this is a one and an eighth straight steer tube. It's not tapered, but that bearing race is set up to act like a one and an eighth tapered fork. That is something I've never seen before. See how there's that space in there right here. Wow. Okay, well, I have to say that's pretty cool because I could take this fork out and literally just toss that fork in and within minutes, I have the fork changed out. Okay, so as I'm going through this, I'm checking out my options. So this is the original um, wheel that came off the low side. So this is a 27.5 by 2.8 tire. And there is plenty of clearance. So I can actually run this plus size if I want to, or if the head angle gets way too slack when I do it in the mullet configuration. So I'm gonna have endless options with being able to configure this uh, bike and see what combo I like the most. That's super cool. I wasn't sure if this bigger tire was gonna fit than that fork. Okay, so I did that rather quickly. I was quite surprised. Having that fork compatible with the headset was a huge deal and me being able to just quickly swap out this other fork. Um, so I got it all dialed. There is one more thing I have to do that I haven't done yet. And that's uh, put a 180 millimeter rotor on the front because this fork, it starts at 180. It won't accommodate a 160 millimeter rotor, which is what's on the front. The thing is, is I actually want a 180 on the front. And this is a 160 um, adapter. So I think if I don't have a 180 laying around, I might have one laying around. I'll just order a 180 adapter and put it on here because I would rather have a 180 rotor on the front anyway. And that way, when I swap this fork back on, I don't have to switch the rotor around. So that's pretty cool. Um, but aside from that one detail, everything just swatched, swapped over without me having to do anything extra. Pretty amazing. Um, so I did take the bike out of the stand and measure the head tube angle. So this is where things get interesting. Um, with the surly fork on there, the rigid fork, the head angle was 70 degrees. With this fork on there, 140 mil millimeter travel 29er fork, it slacked out to 63.5 degree head angle. That's pretty mellow. Um, keep in mind, this fork is not corrected for suspension. This fork is just straight up, like if you saw it on the bike before, the tire was literally right up to the crown here, so, um, or the, the bottom of the steer here. Um, so usually if you see a corrected fork, there'll be a lot of space between the tire and the steer. Um, but yeah, because this isn't suspension corrected, that's why you get such a drastic difference between going from this to that, right? huge axle to crown difference. So it drastically changed the geometry of the bike. Ideally, I would run like a 120 fork and Surly actually recommends like a 100 millimeter fork. Because this is a steel frame, I'm not too worried about over forking it and, and compromising the frame. Um, but you do have to worry about that when you put <laughs> a much longer travel fork on a frame than what was it was originally intended for. Um, the other thing is I didn't measure it, but I eyeballed the bottom bracket and I still have some BB drop, probably around 10 millimeters of BB drop versus the 63 or something when this fork was on it. So that's gonna be a drastic change too and will make the bike very poppy in the front end. So this means this front end is really gonna come up easy, which will be great for jumping and stuff, but not so great for like climbing and things like that. So um, keeping it as a single speed, but the cool thing is, is the frame does come 
equipped with a hanger, so if I ever did want to throw gears on here, I could, right? The low side is a very versatile frame, so that's kind of cool. Um, I don't think, at least not with that fork, I'm going to try the mullet configuration because that's just going to slack it out even more. That'll bring it down to like a 61 and a half or 62 degree head angle and that's just way too slack and then it'll raise the bottom bracket too much i do have the angle headset the geo shift headset i could add a degree which would um <clears throat> raise the bottom bracket even more because you actually bring the front wheel back a little bit if i added a degree so i don't know if i want to do that either because then i could get like 64 and a half degrees um, but I might play around with that and see what I what I think and I'll, I'll have to ride the bike like it is Then I'll have to start playing around with stuff and see what kind of tweaks I need to do to it But I'm kind of stoked about this. I'm, I'm more stoked about the fact that this was already set up for a tapered steer this bottom race never seen anything like it pretty sweet so I was just able to throw that fork on there and this fork will just go right back in there. And like, I bet you I could switch this back to its original form within 15 minutes. Yeah, that's how <laughs> quick it was. Uh, handlebars and stem are right here. Um, I haven't removed these since I bought the bike, so I need to maybe do some cleaning and uh, maintenance on these things. Um, one thing I've been thinking about, <clears throat> maybe some of you that watch my channel that know anything about metal, I do not like how much sweep is on these bars. I like the rise, but they're way too far swept back. And because these are steel, chromoly steel, I'm wondering if there's a way I could bend them and get them bent equally to get the sweep to be way less. I would ideally like like maybe five degrees of sweep or something like that. Or if you know of a bar that's about a three inch, three and a half inch rise, similar to these, um, that have way less sweep, let me know because that's the one thing I don't like about these sunrise bars is they're way too swept back for some reason. The bars that are coming out now, even Wild to make some and some other, like they, they, they love to make them super swept back like that. And I'm actually the opposite. I like my bars to be almost flat, very little sweep to them. So that's kind of the annoying thing is that it's trendy to be, and it's not even for me, definitely not ergonomically correct because I have arms that come out to here and my hands don't fit on the grips right. The only way I feel comfortable on these bars is if I bring my arms in like this, and that's not how I ride. I ride with my arms like this. So, yeah. Anyway, it's way off topic, but something for another day. But I might try to bend those bars, and if you have ideas on how I could do that, safely without compromising their strength too much and you know being able to do it so I'm, i keep them equal somehow let me know in the comments so there you have it playing around with the low side pretty stoked on playing around with this bike um, stoked i get to still have the 27.5 plus tires on here i love the plus size tires especially for a single speed hardtail um so yeah i'm stoked about this appreciate your support for my channel please like and subscribe peace